Our man just said it's Go live. figure. What Are were we, we doing? We must I don't know. I think we were bullshitting. That too? And this and is... cow shitting. Flash and... Grammy! At the dork table on the 4th of January. 2020. We're the, we're, yeah. This is our first 2020 show. Got you know what? Someone told me 2020 would give me perfect vision. And it's although, alive. you know, third eye vision is getting a little bit better, the other one, no, no I still got to wear my glasses. They're liars. But today's uh, episode of The Dork Table is entitled, The Show They're Isn't liars, no. for People Who Require Therapy 2020. And with that, we're going to say hey to Grim. Hey, Grim. Happy 2020. Hey, Grim. And Moose. And... All these, well, we could tell the other people, but Grim and Moose are the main cornerstone of the area. Of so, the R. Lemon. Yeah, them. yeah. And there you go with that. And uh, we got. And then you got Beatles. Well, bots and bodies that associate with some of us and not with others. I know. Mm-hmm. And Barman, who is just absolutely splendiferous, and and told me that we were live before we were live. Barman. Mm-hmm. See, Barman is like a calendar for holidays. Barman tells me when I should be doing whatever I'm supposed to be doing. You should be. Because I don't know to do it until Barman says I should do it. Because he says you should be doing it. So go do it. Do it. Do it. (laughs) (laughs) I broke Mary again. Oh, no. (laughs) Yes, you did. Okay. Yes, you did. You may proceed. I may proceed with saying hi. Beetle, yeah, they have Beetle yeah. barman. Yeah, Beetle and Screamy and, Grimmy. and Grimmy. Moose Girl. Hey, Moose, moose girl. did you see that White Moose? White Moose. I don't remember where I posted it, but Uh-oh. I posted a White Moose somewhere. Racist. <gasps> yeah, the lovely Miss Cantot. Uh, k- 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 yeah, let's start this over again, shall we? Well, Hello, Miss not... Kate. Hey. You, you did break me. I thought I hurt. I thought read. I hurt my my tea hand on that play there, <laughs> sport. That. Okay. I know it. It, it almost, you know, hoit, almost hoit burnt myself that. with that last. Okay, continue. Oh, <laughs> we got some anti here too, as <laughs> well as Asmodeus Asmo and Chalcedony. Chalcedony. We got a free enslaved free here enslaved. as well. See, none are so. How is that? None are so enslaved as those who believe they are free. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. If you right. just believe it, yeah. you're screwed. Yeah, just because believe believing it. has screwed. a lie in the lie. middle of it. Lie in the middle of it. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I'm just I'm moving along as you prattle in the background. That there you go. Yeah, that's what that's how I roll. Just saying. That's the way you roll. I don't know. That's where why you're at yourself. I'm I'm sitting here at my. Computer desk doing a rolly thing, and wow, Ram I just gave Z. myself a light head. Uh, hi, Java, 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 Java Dr. T. T. As well as Jay Dress. Han Sol, a- yo, oh. bastard, how are you? Hi, Han Sol. I also see Meister Brow is here as well Woody. as Poopster, okay. Poopster. and Prince. Prince. Poopster yeah, they are they still doing Poop. their Thursday night show? I'd very very One. I'm sorry guys. I very very listen on yeah. evenings cuz I got I got things. One of and the original she, duet is still there. Cuz I've done this with Vinny, so I know how it, it must be all confusing. Just the show oh. is still there. Don't worry about it. the players in it. Yeah. Ah, that'll ah. come. Yeah, cuz people have, you know, ideas. Yeah. Like Rob Woikes. He has ideas all the time. Uh oh, free and slave but just he's left. He's always higher than a DC ten, so be careful. Well, he's in Arky. You know how those Arky. potheads oh. are, Miss Mary. They're dangerous. I know. They're a danger I to know. society. Have you seen someone walking around with a pot on their head? No. It's really pretty scary. I, well, yeah, I did see a picture of that in like a magazine of some place in Africa. Well, you know, there's those overachiever ones that, you know, they have the whole toilet up there. Oh. And then there's the ones who just have the houseplant pot. I think those are called Shriners. I'm not positive. Oh, okay. <laughs> Beetle! <laughs> okay. Hi, Rome. Rome. <laughs> I broke Flash. I know. We yeah. have Vanna White here. Lovely letter turner of the yeah. R.O.M. Yeah. And a weather dork. Weather the dork. Most, my- the most obnoxious uh, 
spot on the RLM, and they named it after us. Weather Dork gets bratty. Weather Dork. Yeah, it's it's a condescending bot. It gets bratty. Oh, it's rude, and it tells I you know. off and shit. <laughs> Calls you names. I know. Wow. I what you know? What I got? I got called a dumbass the other day that, by Weather Dork. Da da! Welcome to the club. You know, I feel special. You are special. Uh, well, yeah. Short bus and all. In any case. Um... Oh, sweet. Poops are retired. Thank you, Grim. Thank you. Prince is now doing the power hour on Thursday nights with Z-Pix and Rotten Socks. Rotten Socks. Oh, man. See, yeah. finally, yeah. there's some truth yeah. in advertising. Because, well, yeah, I take my socks off at the end of the day, and, man, they're rotten. <laughs> but you know, you know how I usually butcher things when I try to repeat them? So I knew the show was still intact to a degree because I heard it. But that one Sweet. of the guys wanted to get off and do something different. But the three guys that are still going to do the show. There you go. Ah. Sweet. Da, 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 da. I may just have, well, let's see, will I be back? Oh, no, Thursday I have, Thursday I will be up at Lisa B's. I won't get, I'll I'll just have to listen to the podcast. That's podcast. all there is. To. Podcast. In any case, Phantom, we got a Phantom the here. Phantom. And a CC66, as well CC66. as Chaskura. Cycle. Hello, here. honey. She's gone Cycles. with the dog. And that damn band meter. Hey, damn band meter. The Dork Cakes just joined. The Dork Cakes. Hello, Mike. Mental pancakes. See, and this is the show for mental people. Ah, but not However, for those you of you. To interpret the word mental. If you require therapy, turn this off now. Go away, oh. You will be disappointed, oh. <laughs> or maybe just keep listening and go, wow, I thought I needed therapy. <laughs> That's probably true. Yeah. Proceed, yeah. Miss Mary. Proceed. We have an E, man. Yeah, we do, don't we? Ah. And an end to civilization or ah. end to civility or, well, we got bombs and rockets and all kind of shit going on right, somewhere in the way. Right on top of God. me. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> Is this a coincidence? Uh, yeah, the, oh, the end of since, civility is right in front of you. Since when does F follow E? Huh? Huh? Oh, the alphabet. Look at the alphabet. Never mind. Duh. I just thought of that. Hey. Yeah, you're <laughs> Okay, this is not fair. And we got a frumpy and a frumpy woik, too. You know hey. what? Fair starts with an F, too. So does Canada. What? Hey, what? fucking okay. Canada. It starts with an F. Sort of. Okay. It's fucking what? Canada. You know, it's oh, like... Oh, 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 well, yeah, okay. I like the it. name of my cult. It was right there in front of me the whole time. I don't know why I didn't see it sooner. I mean, you watched. In, in 20 or 30 years, this is going to be huge. <laughs> well, the reason why you didn't see it was because it was right there in front of you. It's a great name. You don't remember the name I came up with? It's called... No. That fucking cult is the name oh. of my cult. So whenever people go, hey, have you ever heard of that fucking cult? They go, yeah. <laughs> hey, talk about free advertisement. Instant initiation, yeah. too. Life oh, membership. Wow. Yeah, you don't have to know you're in it to be in it. <laughs> I have to See? tell you first. <laughs> that's, how cult, that's how cult leaders work. It's like being born. Yeah, you are. Hey, it's like government, right? I stole the whole thing from government. It's not uh, all my idea. I know it sounds clever and shit, but no, they do it. They do it. I'm going to do it, too. I'm going to drop little documents, hand them to you. Hey, now you're part of my country. You know, you don't have to sign the Declaration of Independence or anything. So, hey, who cares what fucking paper you're loyal to? Well, you can't <laughs> sign a Declaration of Independence if you're part of a country, because then you're no longer independent. You're part of a country. Oh. Durr. <laughs> Yeah, well, this might not be any time for rational thinking, but... Oh, that's true. Hey, yeah. you know what? No, Gromit is here. Gromit! Gromit. Gromit. Yeah, we got to finish this. JJ's! Oh. JJ's. 
I was kind of busy with my pipe and forgot about the people in the ROM. <laughs> yeah, you are. We got yeah. a slim dim flim here as slim, well. Slim dim flim flim. And, oh, and how nice. Smartass. Smartass. And the holiest Roger ever. You heard it here first, folks. Ever. And then two here. picks to Z-picks. round out the crew of those wild and crazy people over here in the RLM. For so. your alcoholic pleasure, while you type your fingers to the bone, and that's your crew to play with. Anyway. Oh. So, I know, I was getting carried away about my cult, but... Rob Works hey. fired up the bubbler and passed it around. That well, was awfully civil of him, don't yeah, you think? but I fired mine up and didn't pass it anywhere. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, yeah, you were Bogart, I weren't you? Tripped over oh, my, yeah, I tripped over my ego on the way in the room tonight. Here we sit. Ah. So, you know what's on my mind this week on the dark table, Miss Mary? What's on your mind? I don't know. Is yeah. it weighing heavily on it? I don't think so. Well, how could you? What would you consider weighing heavily on your mind anyway? Well, mm-hmm. you know, if you have, like, really heavy thoughts. Uh, well, how would you judge a heavy Thought compared to like a not heavy thought. What would be a heavy the defining? Thought gives you a headache. Oh, I have no. Nah, I don't get headaches. Well, then you don't have any heavy thoughts, but you might have oh, deep thoughts. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> deep <laughs> thoughts. <Moving along>. <laughs> <laughs> I see the female mind always goes to the deep thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was quoting some Nazi fucking psychiatrist out of the late 1800s, uh-huh. early 20, 20th century. But this is my opinion. You know what I think the psychiatry thing is? What? A scam. Oh, and I was thinking it was just yeah. a mind fuck. That but, too, you know. but yeah, but oh, you're you're more colorful in your explanation. They're a little missing. So Well, that's why they call them therapists, because where you put the division in there, if you put the rapist, then you know exactly what it is. Now, see, this fits in my... I had a premonition, and this is the topic that I entitled. In my reality, I'm greater than 10 to the 10th power. Huh? 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 And here we are talking about how great we are. Huh? Huh? Clever. It just depends on... How you spell the word great. Or how you interpret. You know what I mean? It's to yourself. Come on. Only adult I mean, to their self would be some pitiful wretch that, oh, nobody would want me. Oh, I'm so unattractive. Oh, I don't have enough money. Oh, my parts are too small. Oh, Lord. But I'm like a fatigue. You know, gloom, despair, and agony on me. Yeah. Yep. But the people that are all in love with their self, like, say, Donald Trump, there you go. You don't have to be Donald Trump to be in love with yourself. That, lots of idiots can do that for free. <laughs> and yet, you well, know, there's really nothing wrong with loving yourself. Got to you know, so start you, somewhere. Yeah, hey. and if you don't know how to do that, then how in the heck are you going to figure out how to love anybody else if you can't even love yourself? See, how will my cult grow? If I don't take care of me, think about it. It's just obvious. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you, know, you go. It's kind of like you want to take care of all these other people, but you well, can't no, take care no, of them no, if you no, don't no. take care of yourself. Oh, no. Being in my cult has nothing to do with me taking care of you at all. No, no. Being in my cult means that you mind your fucking business, I mind my fucking business, and we get along in the middle part where we do shit. Oh. Oh, yeah, I don't think that uh, social interaction should be forced on you, like some kind of police action. You should be willing to do the things that you do in society as part of your day, not begrudgingly and, oh, I hate doing this shit. That's not fun. That's the opposite of fun. So it would be along the same lines as Clint Eastwood saying, get off my lawn? Well, I I don't know, because... You got to pick a side to blame for that argument to have a, uh, a life. And in my, my physical life, right? 
the mm -hmm. the minority being the only American guy here doesn't learn how to speak Danish. These people know how fucking hard it is. There's Danish words the Danes have trouble saying. Okay, and when they try to speak English, this is the truth of it from the Danish woman I married, is there sounds in English that are hard for her to make because she has to slow down to think about making them. Uh huh. Like V and W are opposite in Danish than English. See, now I know that because I grew up in an area that was heavily Germanic. Mm -hmm. you know oh, yeah, I know, I know that. I'm, and so, yeah, yeah. you had their Wiener schnitzel and uh -huh. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Them, their Germans down there, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'll, see, in, in America, everybody makes fun of everybody else but themselves. Oh, I make fun of myself. Well, all, all right, 10% out of, out, of, out of 100, maybe 10% will. And the other 90 will pick on somebody else that they don't have to look at. Well, yeah, they'll pick on them, and then when the other one picks back, then they go, oh, yeah, that wasn't very nice. Make yeah. them stop picking on me. Well, yeah. in your in your own personal reality and shit, you know, are there really bullies that intervene in your daily life? Or is this just old crap from childhood and memories and looking out, but not personal, you know, like, these things happen to me today? Are we talking about two-legged or four-legged? No, two-legged, four-legged are kind okay. of, they're, they're not really as responsible to their behavior as we are. You can't well, really hold not. a dog responsible for what he does, or her. And they're, but I can hold dogs. my cat responsible for when she comes up and lays on me and, and strategically arranges herself to where her backside is facing my face. <laughs> that, wow. that, is, that is subtle cat abuse kind of stuff. The doctor doesn't even attempt that. Well, Doozer didn't used to, but mm. the last couple of years, she is most definitely, I wake up in the middle of the night or something, and here I got get this tickle on my nose, and my eyes come open, and there's tail wow. swishing on my nose, and, and there's a, and it's like, Doozer! Hey, ah! wait, wait, they've got right. Be careful. Yeah, I know they've got rights, and she has a right to be comfortable, and I understand I'm squishy, oh. and so I'm a comfortable <laughs> bed. But still, I do not need to have the kitty well, right there. Well, you know, it's kind of funny that the people that put up with the most shit from a pet are the people that don't put up with any real shit from other humans. And, the real, and then there's some people like Grimner that don't put up with the pet in the first fucking place, or the people either. <laughs> well, I think Grimmy had a dog at one time, and he just had. Nah, to... he grew out of all that stuff. Listen to oh. listen to him talk on his shows sometimes. Oh, I've got more time to to catch up, you know, pay attention and catch up and whatnot on the internet than you do. Farmer, Mary. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, life on the farm is kind of laid back. Well, not really, but yeah. Well, I do forget what an advantage it is that having you know time that's not aligned to uh, things you must do is such an advantage in life. Yeah, and you know what? I I got a different perspective the other day. I was listening to some video while I was puttering around and cleaning and going through shit, and um, it was someone that was talking about you know people that. Uh, well, she's a medium, and, and she was talking about people that she contacts on the other side. And she said, you know, it wasn't until I really started doing this for other people that I finally realized how many people are on the other side. And even when bad things happen to me, they don't experience those things. And, yeah, okay, it's bonus round for them that they don't experience them. But, man, lots of the best learning experiences come from not so pleasant things happening that kind of prod you along into either learning to stay away from certain individuals or stand up for yourself or to do it right the next time. So I hadn't really thought of it like that, but yeah, yeah, needing to be thankful for even for the shit things that happen because there's a lesson in there and not everybody gets to continue those lessons. Uh, so, well, there's a lot more sides to it than just that, too. I, I mean, more than just two on it. There. There's like, uh, my folks 
taught me how to ride a bicycle as soon as they could. Okay? But what mm. they also raised is this little independent fucking monster that wanted to do whatever it wanted to do when it wanted to do it. And yeah. they didn't see that part of their... that They had, had an untamed two-and-a-half-year-old with a bike. And uh, I had rode my freaking bike down the driveway and just about got drove into in the street, but the truck driver saw me coming and stopped first. So, And I didn't have enough momentum to go too far into the road, just far enough that he could stop and not hit me. Well, there you go. Well, that's the story I was I was raised with. Otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, and see, one he, of my yeah. brother's mother, the last time I was down visiting her, she was telling me about how um, he was an escape artist, and she had him in a playpen out in the backyard. Now, granted, this is way back when playpens weren't quite so safe as they are now. <laughs> safe. Yeah. 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 yeah Fort we fucking had the Knox. But he had climbed out of the playpen, 18 months old, climbed out of the playpen, and just started wandering down the street. Well, he went up to the neighbors down at the corner and decided he wanted to play with their toys. And, and those people had just moved in, so they didn't know who he was. And so they called the cops. Well, the cops are announcing on the radio that this child has been found. Meanwhile, my mom and everybody else is out looking for him. And when they finally get home... And uh, they call the police. The police said, well, we've been announcing it on the radio for the last hour. My brother, when the cops brought him home, he's bouncing up and down in the back of the cop car and having a good old time. He had an adventure. <laughs> but, you know, that shit wouldn't happen these days. No, no. It's a different world. We have definitely gone backwards in time or maybe, maybe forward. Maybe the truth is, is that when you overpopulate and you undernourish as a population the way we've been, and you poison us at all angles, this is the result. This is what you get. Yeah, it's devolution Not instead of yeah. evolution. But we could fix this, but there's not enough uh, unity, I would say, in what the population that's left that knows what the fuck is truly going on. There's so few of us, it's not believable. Well, and everybody's got their focus on a different area yeah. oh, instead of, yeah. Yeah. you know, everybody yeah. Yeah. getting together and focusing on one thing, fix that, and then move to the next. Because yeah. that just causes people to start bickering, even well, the ones that get along. It's like this Greta girl, you know, people don't give it any consideration that she's been followed around by professional photographer, photographers since this thing with her school started. But nobody else in the world did. <laughs> Wait yeah. a minute. What do you mean? You understand did what you I mean, Did you see right? the stuff about her dad saying that probably it wasn't a good idea to get her going on this? No, I, I don't really follow the fan mail or anything. I heard about Greta when they were pissed off about her in Germany. And that was it. And this United Nations thing came after that. And I went, oh, fuck, here we go. Just like the um, Al Gore crap, you know, that Hollywood may give him a fucking award for some shit movie he made. And the next thing you know, the public believes everything they're told. They don't have any ability to question shit. So well, that was sad. all part of the plan. Mm. Oh, do you think so? That was all part of the plan. Mm. It was all part of my and, evil plan. And, all right. <laughs> and, but see, and here we are, right? We're civilized. We get along with each other for the most part. Yet, there's this invisible world. It's electronic anyway, where there's wars and famine and starving, and, you know, tidal waves and earthquakes and all this other, all this shit that happens, wars and crap. But it's always way over there somewhere. So I don't oh, yeah. really ever, unless I see a link of something, I don't ever see any of this shit. So yeah, keep in, the mess over there. Well, no, I, maybe so, but in my physical reality, there is no dis, uh, world gone to shit. There's uh, this world I live in. And the yeah. one that I live in, instead of uh, the attitude I probably have should have of, America is the representative best country in the world, love. No, it's not how I live. I live with wherever I'm at. These people think their shit don't stink. 
Don't matter where you're at, that's where you're at. Trust me. Yeah. It's a buckaroo bonsai thing. No Universal. Where you go, that's there right. You there you are. Right. So if you're a statist, you're going to fall in with statist. If you're a free man, you're going to probably not fall in with anybody because a free man is truly alone. <laughs> that was the yeah. that was the the meat of the way things have worked out for me, where I I didn't have to spend a whole lot of time learning a language so I could say it wrong to people and get in trouble for calling their mother a donkey and not realize it, you know? Because yeah. in foreign languages, words might sound like something hey, you don't know. I fuck up English and I speak English. <laughs> oh, I know. I can I can screw it up with the best of them. And, and to this, or the worst. And Mary, to this day, I was at the grocery today I wanted to get circuit cake on the way out. And uh, the little girl that was giving me the cake didn't ever I've never seen her she never saw me but when I, I was speaking English I saw the ding she got a chance to speak her English they're students that work you know part-time jobs oh, yeah. for the and, and when they get a little uh, American guy go hey that's pretty good English they seem to appreciate it it's yeah. not yeah and it's because I understand them just fine and they don't know that because to them, they have like me. If When I speak Danish, I have an American accent. It sounds ridiculous. But to the Dane, it's the same way, or, but the opposite. They think they, they sound funny, and I tell them, no, I think you sound exotic more than funny. Cause oh, yeah. I, I've heard English in so many dialects over the years. Yeah, it does have an awful lot of dialects, an awful lot of, you know, depending on the part of country you're from, you know, different slang and all that other fun stuff. And, yeah, it can be it can be quite entertaining trying to figure out or trying to explain to someone what you mean by some of your slang. So, Like they believe that the war between the North and the South ever ended, for one. there There's a fantasy right there. Oh, there's a lot of fantasies, but you know, the more I more I look at that stuff, the more I think, criminy Christmas. Who started this nonsense? Bankers. You know, it's not that. Well, it's not just. It's not that the teachers are willingly lying to people or willfully lying to people. They that's what they were taught too, and that's what their teachers were taught, and that's what their teachers were taught. <laughs> So, gripes, you keep going back, and it's like, okay, <laughs> Judas Priest, somebody had to start this shit somewhere. But I don't know if I got the time or the patience to go that far back. Well, that's why I think, okay, to be that kind of person, right? Your reality has to put you in a mental state where you think that you're ten times better than the, everybody else around you. Without you, they don't even exist. you got to be that got that kind of showy bullshit going on. Otherwise, people would treat you like I treat the celebrity. It's like, whoop, who gives a flying fuck? <laughs> and mm. it, it's a zen uh, kind of thing, huh? I don't know. I, I've just gotten to the point in life where I've seen everything that everything I wanted to go look and see. I went and saw it, and then this all happened. But my curiosity didn't continue. So, hey, the wife just came in with the dog. See, because I'm living, you know. And banana. Yeah, I'm living this little, in this little podunk town, all quiet and peaceful. So the world's on fire, but I don't see it. Doesn't it, There's no wavelength to me. It doesn't suck me into it. I don't know. Just read about it. I'm sorry. I was responding to. Oh, to, uh, you talking in the chat? Moosey and Java Doctor. Oh, hey, Java and a moose. Yeah, because Moosey said the government creates criminals, and Java said the FBI creates terrorists, and I said, yeah, it's yeah. called job security. Yeah, oh, sure. What would these people do if they didn't have crimes to... And then all this TV shit that you see, it's all advertising. It's not even real. People that... People, if they treated each other in real physical life, the way they treat each other on TV, there'd be a lot fewer of us around, <laughs> I think. And then, on you know the other what? hand, what? Java just said the goal is to finally criminalize everyone. And I think, <laughs> I think we need to take 
we need to stop looking at criminal as such a bad thing. Because if we're all going to be criminals anyway, let's rejoice in it. Let's enjoy our criminality. Uh, I'm going to think for myself, I'm a criminal. Because uh, you know there are thought police out there. Well, right, but the average Joe assumes the worst out of his peers. This is what I'm disturbed about. I mean, crying out loud, it's always, they're going to do this, and they're going to do that, 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 that. Come on. You know, yeah. and I just don't see all that ne- negative in physical life. I just read about it. Yeah. yeah. It's island well, living. I don't, I don't see a just, lot of it either. Well, right, but the island living and then the smaller community thing. But still, when I was in a bigger city, all these fucking problems that we've created, they didn't exist any more then than they do now. <laughs> Just today, I'm aware that they exist. And where I was, I'm not there no more. So, fuck it. Yeah. Oh, I don't have that. I'm My reality, I'm not greater than 10 to the 100th power. Fuck that. I leave that to the professionals. And they've done this with it. So, nah. My answers are too simple for the complicated mind to handle. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. that's why they always say it's it's just too complicated. You just wouldn't understand. Well, yeah. you know what? You're right. I don't understand hmm. batshit crazy. Well, maybe I'm not batshit crazy. Though. It's a three-step program. If you follow the three steps to my <laughs> success program, I guarantee you'll, you'll succeed. Nud can't fail you. Ah, See, the three old, step program. Three step program. And if you fuck up one of the steps because you fucked it up, it's on you. Is it like doing a really bad version of the cha cha? Kind of, yeah. The first thing ah. you do, right, is you live in the truth of stuff, not into in the lies of stuff. No, you start rejecting all that crap. And then once you're living in something that's comfortable, your mind shifts a little bit. You see things differently. I think. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Okay. And then the second thing I would do is I would I would uh, not kill other people. I think that not killing other people is kind of a side effect of a successful life. It shows me that you're all there. But somebody that, you know, like Obama or Trump that would take the most important job of the world and all they're really doing is just murdering people in the name of fucking politics and religion and shit like that. No, why Why would you support this crap? Don't get it. So, now, I come to that point in life. Other people, not so much. That's their life. See, and that's, that's one of those things that one of my brothers is translating, trying to, he's learning to translate from Latin, the Bible and stuff. And he said, you know, one of the things that, that a lot of people don't realize is the Ten Commandments, it doesn't say thou shalt not kill, it says thou shalt not murder there is a difference and yes there is a difference but i wonder if maybe they say it's thou shalt not kill so that they can say unless in certain circumstances when we deem it necessary well which definition of which you're the wordsmith though which definition of which applies to murder as being wrong period and killing being wrong only under these terms right like that well Killing is one of those things that it happens all the time. I mean, you, mm. even the vegans go yeah. out there and they kill a plant. They go out and they oh, pull okay, it up and okay, make a salad right, out of it. Right. So that's that use, is like kill. useful murder is killing. Right? Whereas murder is murder. intentionally taking another's life out of self or from selfish Means. or in order to ah. profit financially or something. Hmm. You know, it's it's an ill intent. As opposed to vegans who are going out and, oh, look at that garden. I'm going to go it, and You know, it, that it's, funny, it's funny that you bring that up because I, w- I was making a joke to Cirque earlier. She's over there knitting, and I'm sitting over here playing on my computer games. And I'm, you know, making jokes, getting ready for the show and whatnot. And I was thinking, uh, maybe this being, you know, killing isn't such an unnatural human thing as they make it out to be. So that they could sell us this idea of murder being wrong. Because if we knew the truth about killing is sometimes just part of living. That's what people do. 
that uh, the exaggerations of TV wouldn't have ever taken a root in the population the way they did. They made it all about, oh, punishment. Oh, fuck you. Why not just teach people in the first place it's wrong to kill things? That's not, but that's not what we're taught. I mean, do you even, yeah. do you even remember being uh, a child where you didn't have an enemy? Where, uh, however old I was, I always remember being angry at something because there were bullies in my life. My father, my brother, my uncles, all that kind of shit, right? So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, well, these fuckers, they figured, well, you're little and the world is going to torture you, so we're going to prepare you for it. And they did. They did a fucking job. Well. But it. But my defense thing was never about the size. It was just about people that were stupid, like the people that bullied me. <laughs> it was a conflict of interest there, dear. You know? Yeah. Uh, it's very well, it's very seldom think, though that uh children are so in tune with what they fucking want at early ages back then. It's a it was a different world then. Nobody listened to kids when I was four or five years old. I told you to shut up and sit down a lot. Yeah. But Yeah, I, isn't that funny? You know when 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 they're babies you can't wait till they say their first word, and you can't wait till they start crawling and walking. And then once they start talking and walking, you tell them to shut up and sit down. Fuck no. I, I was teaching my kid to read as soon as I could, just like my mom well, and dad did yeah. to me. As soon, as soon Well, she had three older siblings, too. So teaching her was really easy because she was always competing with the others, you know, because she had the three older ones to keep up with. So, ah. it, but instead of a deficit, they all they all took care of her equally. It was weird to see them grow up together, because uh, it was unique at the time. But the state fucked up the marriage thing, you know. But me and the kids got along okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, you well, know what. See, and I, I taught my girls. I mean, I did flashcards with my girls when they See, were little. Yeah, there's always something. I used the grocery store, yeah, stuff like that. And then the well, other kids, but yeah, the yeah, kids would do that with her. They'd be doing homework, and then she'd be sitting there with them, and they teach her shit. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it was a great advantage over uh, what I grew up with, I think. But you know, and now she's like 28 now, <laughs> so it's not a baby. Yeah. Well, huh? It it's funny how people do things differently. And I, my ex used to get so mad at me because I would, you know, as driving down the road with the kids, I would tell them, "Oh, look, there's a herbivore. You know what a herbivore <laughs> is?" And I would explain it to him, stuff like that. And yeah. the ex got to hear me do that one time, and he said, "Would you stop that?" And I said, "Why?" Nothing wrong with that. She needs to learn what a cow is. A cow is an herbivore. She needs to learn what, you know, I may as well teach her now. And talking with your children is good interaction with them. Hmm. Well, you're going to make them smarter than me. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> that's a that's a, a typical. I've heard that story told many times in life. But I, I don't know if I've ever seen it. I it's don't, don't it's know. a weird place to be in when someone tells you to do to stop doing something because and and their because is like what you're better at what? it than they are. Well, I just children are sponges, you know, and, and they much, will yeah. soak up whatever yeah. is around them. And if you yeah. put stuff around them that is beneficial for them, watch what they or watch what their curiosity. Yeah, there you go. You know, it's wonderful to watch them when they start soaking it up, and then you ask them something, and it's like squeezing a little bit of that information out, and they're like, yeah, they share it all over the place. Right, so, but cool. when, you, when you're older, you find out that what, you're, what you've done is you've taught somebody else how to speak dog Latin, and everything that you think you did, you did about half of it, maybe. And the other half, well, it went the way it did because of the way that it happened. It's like a catch twenty two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, 
because my kid was born into the state time when the state was taken over the hardest. So yeah. Oh, and I did I did this thing where I called the news people to complain about something about the school. I was on. I caused a little disturbance. <clears throat> so they found a little problem with me and they ca- caused this disturbance right fucking back at me. And you know. The system's got way more resources and a lot more time, so they want. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh. yeah, it all started with uh, me telling the, the stepchild, the oldest boy, is having trouble in reading. And I'm not a forcible kind of person. I don't think nobody will perform if you force them to. I think that's stupid. So I took him out to the backyard and I said, you know what? We're going to go down to Sears. Get you a shovel. Of course, he says, why am I going to go get me a shovel, Lou? And he said, well, when you're hungry and you got no money in your pocket, you have two choices. You're going to dig holes for money or you're going to steal shit or maybe eat out of garbage cans. And I said, okay. Now, wh- when do you want to go get it? And he said, I'll give you a little time to think on it. So he goes back to school. And apparently, his version of that story to the school turns out to be child abuse. <laughs> so. uh, well, you know, it's it's, and that's where it's not really so much in the telling as the interpreting right, or the right. listening. But this is how the whole damn thing started. And then another, yeah. they had another problem with the kids in school, and I got involved in that too. So one, and the school was embarrassed about it. It was head lice on the kids. <clears throat> Ah, well, yeah, and that pissed. happened. Right, right, but I'm like, hey, what the fuck, you know? You know, I think I'm a, a, some kind of slave to these bugs. I got to clean my fucking house every fucking month because some people's kids are dirty. I said, I'm keeping them home until you straighten this shit out <laughs> on the news. And well, see how you are. You kept them from being indoctrinated for how many days? I don't remember Came how on. long it was, but I called the, the principal of the school and told him, I'm planning to do this, whether you like it or not. He said, I really hope you don't call true and have me arrested for keeping the kids out, but this is ridiculous. And he, between me and him, he agreed. And when the system got more involved, that was the basis of it. We're checking you out because you're you know, you're abusive to these children. Abusive to the children. He's got to get a shovel to do what, sir? It's like, Oh, no. And then, you know, you swear in front of this child? Holy fuck, what do we got here? It's like never ending. So just like an encounter with the cops, no matter what you say to the police, they're just going to make it worse. So don't say anything. They're going to make something out of that, too. Might as well just be quiet. But I didn't know that then. Well, but even being quiet. Oh, that's what I'm saying, yeah. It's one of those things where... Yeah. Where you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Right. Yeah. But they it's like a blood pressure test. They they know how to make you low or make you high just by words. You kidding? It's a mood they set you in. You know? Prepare you mm-hmm. for the right response. And, or either response, they know which pill to tell you about. But what they don't tell you is it's all made up. Yeah. <sighs> and then when you repeat that shit to other people, then, oh, listen to this loony. He thinks blood pressure is blah, 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 blah. Well, it is because it's made up. You don't really have it. You don't have anything that's not normal. What they do is they tell you a story, keep you afraid. This will keep you at that. Uh, uh, no, it won't. This will make you a slave to it so that if without it, you'll get sicker from something completely different. And I went, holy fuck, I'm getting screwed here. Yeah. Hey, Grimmy says you're a trouble magnet. Thank you. If you did business like that, Mary, how long would you last in your your farming business? You treated people the way Big Pharma treats people. A week? Ten days? Yeah. And and yet they still get away with it. And, you know, it's funny you say that, and... And I had just seen it over on on uh, Twitter. What is that? Oh, read the damn inserts. Why do you trust Big Pharma with your family's well-being? You think that they really want you healthy? They're 
they are literally not. paying you to get it. Try and think about that for a sec. Which, yeah, there's there's places that are saying you'll get a such and such discount if you get a flu shot today. Wow. No, thank you. No, thank you. But in it's crazy. People sit there and they just swallow this shit. I saw something earlier today. Some doctor was saying how everybody was so freaking nuts mm. because, you know, you need to get your child inoculated because if your child isn't inoculated, then this child over here with the autoimmune disease could get sick. And mm. it's like, wait a minute, how did that child get the autoimmune disease? <sighs> there you go. And, and, did it come from bad genes? Where did those bad genes come from? If mom and dad don't have autoimmune diseases, where did the bad genes come from? Was it an environmental toxin? Can you say adjuvants injected into a forming immune system? Hmm. Wow, you've come a long way. I mean, it just it makes me nuts with some of this stuff. It's like, right, good but God, you condescending prick! How I, dare you? I first heard Clint Richardson talking about this stuff. That was my introduction into the medical side, the details of what the decisions came from other crap, you know, about high blood pressure. But the inoculations, Clint had a big hand in that, and repeating this to other people. Ah, you got to read this shit yourself. If you're interested, if you care about life at all, check into this inoculation shit from the truth of it. And how I mean the truth is, when you find the fucking truth about inoculations, you'll feel it when you read it. It'll all make sense to you. And until that happens, you're just believing the stories you're told. Mm -hmm. it, it takes a yeah, it takes a certain amount of what desperation in, in a sense of yeah. mental. You have to have to reach a tipping point yeah yeah where you're willing to listen to the most ridiculous fucking story because it, this might be it. it might not be it but hey i'll listen and that's what you know that's what we're doing i suppose it, we're, we're bringing things to people they've never heard in this particular light and what they have heard swayed them to believe the medical is going to save me no that's the story you're getting told to get fucked over yeah and it's all yeah. done within the confines of the fucking law, under the color of law. And the people in this damn uh, modern day in the, in the Internet world, there's a fair share of them on mines, for example, begging for the color of law and the Constitution. They don't really understand law. If they understood the fucking law, they wouldn't beg it to be there. They would want it to be taken away. Go away, oh. But that's not what they got. They raised a different product than that. And they got this mix of fucked up and sort of fucked up. Well, you got natural law that may not seem fair to the perpetually butthurt, but it applies equally mm. across the board. Mm. Doesn't give a shit how much money you got. Doesn't give a shit what color your skin is. Doesn't care what piece of dirt you came from. Mm. Natural law applies to everyone. Mm -hmm. And then you have man's law mm -hmm. that is very selective. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people out there that, well, well, that law, <laughs> that one right there, I don't like that one right there, but they don't yeah. realize that yeah. that one is just an extension of that one, which is an extension of that one. Mm -hmm. And all of them are extensions of yeah. man's law, yeah. which is selective. <laughs> yeah. Well, I broke it down to three, three parts. The political, the science, and the nature. Okay, for the sake of three words to identify three major things, right? Mm -hmm. So we go political, and then you got like social, and then nature. Well, let's like leave science out of it as a word. Uh, but whatever, whatever man insists that other men do that he doesn't have to do, don't do that. <laughs> Why, why, why yeah. isn't that a common sense stand for any fucker on this planet to take? I take that stand. I don't speak to anybody in a bad tone, except maybe on the radio, bitching about some complaint I have. But in personal life, there's no struggle for space or uh, freedom, being left alone to do as I want. I'm 
exactly that and for me to do exactly the fuck I please. And for some reason, I have the ability to understand the difference between what is socially acceptable and what isn't. I don't know. Maybe I came with a magic fucking translator. But I just think that just being a basically decent person is enough. There's not, you don't have to learn anything. If you can survive, you know, anywhere small for any amount of time, you know how to do it. Yeah. Okay. And I think when you're overcrowded and you're stuffed in cities and all your senses are poisoned and deprived of nutrients and so on and this, that, and the other sunshine, all kinds of different crazy ideas of God is it breeds a different kind of animal that doesn't, it doesn't cope well in a society that isn't overcrowded and fucking uncomfortable. That is its comfort level. It's been modified to accept that as reality. <laughs> living on the 16th fucking floor, Johnny. And call yeah. it and call it living. Well, that's because they don't know any different. No, it's because we've been modified into acceptance. This is deeper oh, yeah. than just oh, uh, Mary. This has taken centuries of planning. Oh, yeah. This is deep thought, hard at work. And the future, I don't want to be here in 40 years to see this Orwellian ball of shit these fucking idiots are going to create out of this, you know, earth. Because the earth that I've seen in my lifetime, wow. Yeah. If, you know, it's like, it, I wish for other people what they wish for me. And what I wish for myself is to have the memories of the experience of being in the Redwoods, for example. Something that was just fucking life-changing. Something so fucking big you'll never forget you did that. And I got a pocket. Yeah, yeah I got a pocket of those things. Some people, yeah. some people are, they don't. They've got, you know, life of kids, kids and grandkids. And work. Yeah. Yeah. Some people have never ever left that small little like five block size area that they were born in. They yep. grew up in. Yep. They got married in big and they cities. die in. Yeah, big cities. Yeah. And then you got your roamers like us that bounced around a bit, some more than others. Mm -hmm. Some of us ain't done bouncing. Hell, Rob Works just went and bought a fucking house in Arkansas. Yeah. Well, that tells me something. You know, as bad as America's sounds with all the fucked up laws and all this, that, and the other, that there's still, as if you're willing to, to play the game, however the game you play is, there's still available housing and places to live that aren't overcrowded and you know, stressful. You just got to yeah. go out there and do it. Yeah. Well. Yeah, pretty much. And then people get all about the finance about it. And there are ways to buy a fucking house without any money. See, and I just think we just plain need to get rid of money. Well, I'm, I'm trying to tell you is there's other ways to, to buy and trade in anything. You don't need money to do anything in this life. Unless that's the road you choose. And you know what? The whole <coughs> barter and trade thing. Oh, yeah, there's association. It is also a yes. slippery slope because then you have to decide, well, mine is more valuable than yours. And that they have really got the whole damn world convinced hmm. that that you can assess value, you can apply value to all of this other fun stuff, and my stuff is stuff, and your stuff is shit, mm. and there's only so much shit to go around, <laughs> and there's not enough room for uh, all of uh, us here. And, no. <laughs> and you just want to go, wait a minute. That's why I minute. started my, my cult. It's exactly why. See, when the people need it, it'll be there. Yeah. And they won't even know they're in it when they're in it. They're just all of a sudden something will shift. You know, it'd be like an earthquake or a hurricane. And some of them will keep it and some of them won't. That seems to be the, the path that we're walking down right now. And all this crap with going to war with Iran and all that shit. Eh. 
They do or they don't. I'm I'm beyond giving a fuck about their stupid wars. But I do have an Iranian that works down the street at his store. And it does get a little uncomfortable because, hey, you know, my people are bombing your people because your people attacked uh, the embassy because, oh, you fucking bay, what a bunch of shit. <laughs> so I don't ever want to get into that. See, that's when you just look at him and say, are you good with me? Is no, I'm no, right, right. We're beyond all that, but you still. Know, and if and if we're if we're good with each other, fuck the rest of that shit. I was in there today. It just felt uncomfortable because of my mind. You know, my thing. I'm yeah. fucking worried about what anybody else thinks, Mary. <laughs> I, I, know, get, I, I know. got enough trouble sorting out my crap to get to your crap. <laughs> well, I get that. I get that. But so, you know, there's just some. I yeah. see all this stuff of. You know, the American people and my government doesn't speak for me. And, and I just, every time I see shit like that, it's like, that's pretty much a given. Well, just because I okay, on this I'm gonna pause. dirt right here you... doesn't mean that that asshole over there speaks for me. That asshole over there does not speak for me. I'll speak for so. you anytime. It's okay. But, you know, well, yeah, but I don't have to identify with it. Isn't uh, right? But isn't that the cornerstone of the modern mind of politics? Is that this man or woman, whatever, represents me? How can you be dumb and not really understand that the money to get that me into office came from a corporation, and they keep track of all their donations from corporations? And if you look well, at their voting track records, you can see which corporations did they vote in favor of over which corporation, and where did the money come from? <laughs> they don't even call it a crime. They call it lobbying. <sighs> wow. Corporations, corporate. Corporations are just bigger hmm. persons. Hey, I sent you that thing about the Supreme Court. I but... sent you that thing about the written 13th Amendment that they claim they yes. found. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, and that too could. How do you know at this point in history where we are with all the deceptions and lies and bullshit along the road to get where we are now? Why would this particular thing be true? And then on the other hand, okay, then, see, there's two sides to every coin. Uh -huh. Why? Well, why wouldn't the government hide a document of this kind of caliber from the people? You know, because I, my version of America is way different than what I was taught. Because I think that in the beginning of all this, there was a group of guys that wanted to get out from under the weight of this other fucking guy that was an ocean away. Well, we can fuck off, fuck him off. We can make it out here without him. And that was their intention. And mm -hmm. then, and then it worked to a point. And then the people, yeah. all right, well, then the illusion of, look at our freedom. But it really was never free. They just were told so by the leadership, but the English didn't leave. <laughs> they still no. stayed. And then after they left, they came back and invaded again. <laughs> and we're only, yeah. but in school, we're only taught a little bit about the revolution. Well, what about the War of 1812? Huh? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> well, that was because how <laughs> dare they be so impudent. <laughs> oh, as hey. to survive, we were trying to teach them a lesson of tough love. Oh, yeah? Think you're so bad? There. <laughs> Deal with it. Survive on your own. Oh, wait. Uh, Look. Uh, they're not only surviving, they're thriving. They're prospering. Shit, they're out doing us. God dang, we got to do something about this. It, this don't look good. Hmm. Yeah. You know, That's, the winter before I came to meet Cirque here in, in Denmark, I was in Scotland still. I'm in Kirkwall drinking at a bar. And I'm a book reader. So I'm not struck weird by people in, you know, reading books in bars. And in, so in Scotland, it's kind of normal, too. It's not so looked down on. And there's mm -hmm. this fellow reading this book, and I got curious. And I'm sneaking over. And I had to, I just couldn't not check out what the fucker was reading. He's reading about the invasion of uh, Pearl Harbor being a fraud in Scotland in 20-fucking-13. Yeah. 
Yeah. And here I am, an American, standing next to him trying to find out what he's reading about. And he's reading about the fraud that you know my folks and his folks participated in all those years ago. It's heartbreaking when you got to face the truth that everything that we were told about what happened and why we had to do all these horrible things to each other was a bunch of bullshit. None of it never needed to take place at all. Not one thing. These things are done because people have prices and will believe anything they're fucking told. Simple as that. Yeah. Cause it's, and a lot of that is because it's just so much easier to have a scapegoat. And whatever you're told, it has a tendency to, in people, I guess, are just programmed that way or have been programmed that way to look at it as those other people did it. <laughs> Someone else did it. Yeah, I always tease Cirque. I go, hey, uh, take the girl. I'm innocent. That was all the woman. It was her idea. I, I'm just an accomplice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Are you out mm-hmm. of your fucking mind? No, I would never really do that. But I'll make a joke about it in the privacy of my home or playing around on the radio. But in physical, you know, to blame somebody else for what you do, that's the lowest form of bullshit that there truly is. Yeah, and and I would think most people would have gotten that kind of whooped out of them when they were little. Because I know when I was little, man, I tried to pull that stunt a couple of times. And my mom would always... I'd get it just as bad, if not worse, and she'd say, you knew better. You knew better, or you were the older one. You should have known better, you know, something like that. And, well, yeah, that's true. I knew better. And so, therefore, I don't do that stuff, you know, unless I really think I can get away with it. And then when I get caught at it, it's like, yeah, that was me. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. (coughs) I knew better, but I did it anyway. Well, I'm not so sure. I'm I'm not so sure on what age a human being is when they start to really know the difference. You know, because I've (coughs) I've been involved in raising kids from all ages. And I don't know if I'm like a... I'm just dorky about behavior. Certain behavior, I think of this. I, I like to compare shit balance numbers and variables, figure out who's going to do what next. Show yeah. like that. Um, remember, wh- whose face was the most disgusted at the blown up hot dogs? You know? It's just whose go- face was... Well, I, would tr- I was trying to raise four kids with a, a wife that wanted to work in the evening. So I had to feed these little guys. And my mm-hmm. culinary skills were, you know, eh. so, and there were kids, so, hey, you guys want some hot dogs? Ah, uh, sure, boil with some hot dogs. So I would, but I'm fucked up with the clock so bad still, it's embarrassing. But I, one night I blew up their hot dogs, forgot them on the stove, and they, you know, so I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do to get these kids to eat this shit, because I don't want to cook them something else. So I thought, hey, tell them not to. I did. Don't nobody come in here and eat any of this. It's disgusting. And here they all come running. What is it? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's reverse psychology. No, works it's, really well. Nah, nah. it's not even. Re- it's, it's tell a human being no of any age. What do they do? They immediately want to. Yeah, I don't know. Mm, funny how we are at it. And we're all like that. I'm not different, oh, I don't yeah. think. But what is it about no? Saying no, hearing no, ooh, it's worse than cussing, Miss Mary. It goes against the grain. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If you want to impress people when they ask you shit, tell them no. See how long they stay friendly with you. My friends stay friendly with me because they go, wow, you're a piece of work, motherfucker. But eh, whatever. You know, because I say I don't want to do that. Okay. But I, I give that back. It's not just one sided. So, but most no. people aren't like that. They're very obligated to their obligations. And I'm about living in and trying to get through the day. And if that's going to break my hand, I don't want to do it. Well, yeah, I get that. But I, I also am getting very good at saying, mm, no. 
But have you ever been too high to fish? <laughs> I heard that Actually, on a redneck. Actually, yes, I have. I think that was that the comedy, the redneck comedy guy. I actually have, and <laughs> and I lost a fishing pole <laughs> in the process because mm. I forgot to, you know, when you cast it out there, I forgot to hold on. Oh, forgot to hold on. Wow. Yeah. And the pitch that's, is that's over. That's the only thing I can think of is I forgot to hold on because, <sighs> man, the pole and everything went right out into the lake. Remember how old you were? And then I fell down on the ground laughing my ass off. <laughs> how old were you? Um, 22, 23, And you somewhere. didn't go swim out and get it? Wow. It was dark. Oh, it was, it was dark. Oh, what are you, some kind of dork? Afraid of the dark? Come on. No, I'm not afraid of the dark, but... Afraid of the snakes like, in the water? Yeah. What? What? Well, what? no, I'm, a, I'm afraid of the creepy feeling. <laughs> you know, when, yeah. when the sun is up and you have that creepy feeling <laughs> shit, you can go, ooh, what the hell is that? But you can so when see, it's yeah. Dark I know. Out, it's different, yeah, when it's different. dark out and you step on a creepy feeling shit, it's like total epileptic ninja time. You think that's from too many movies? No, it's from that freaking sensory shit of the creepy feeling, slimy, whatever it was that brushed up against your leg, kind of. Mm. That's where it's from. It's mm. a primal kind of thing. You know, like when you walk through a spider web, first thing you do is, and it's, it happens in milliseconds. <laughs> no. you, everybody, the first thing you do everybody. is look for a spider as you're having your epileptic ninja fit. Yeah, but so, your hands always go in those straight movements where you look like some kind of Bruce Lee idiot. You know, it's it's embarrassing as fuck. Yeah, with epilepsy. Oh uh, well, I'm less the epilepsy. You know, it's it's almost like Joe Cocker singing. Okay, That's, yeah, but I got the. Have you ever uncle, watched him? Uh, oh yeah, but that, I got that, the yeah. cousin it hair thing going on, so it changes my dynamics a little bit. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> my, my arms, I, I'm well, a flailer. <laughs> I have still seen some big men, way bigger than me cower to a fucking spider or a spider web. I just moved, you know, not any plan. Just It just happened. And boy, you look like a sissy right there, sport. <laughs> yeah. But we all, but it's all of it. It's not just them. If you see it, that, and it makes you laugh, guess what you probably do? <laughs> and it's true. Yeah, but just, yeah. A, just imagine <laughs> what the spider feels like. I don't think they do. I don't think they have I'm, the ability. I'm thinking the spiders are in there going, Nah. Marge, I got to build a house again. Damn human. Jeez, no, I really don't. Well, uh, I didn't get it on video, but oh, you should have seen it. It was freaking hilarious. It would make a good cartoon there, a little miss. Yes, it would. No. I, but, you know, insects have their purpose in life. And that's why they've invented exterminator companies to kill them. See? Yeah, because they have a purpose in life, and we can't have anything that has an actual purpose around. So you know what I found out about spiders? Yeah. That uh, lavender plants, apparently, the spiders don't like the lavender plants. They don't like lavender, and they're not real keen on peppermint either. Ah, peppermint. Ah, we got peppermint out there in the back, huh? Oh, so we got some peppermint plants started last year, but... I've been meaning for, I don't know, it's one of those things where it doesn't matter. It's something to, to do if you ever think of it. And planting in some of that damn stuff. I've been planning to and I've never done it. But we put the peppermint in on the other side of the yard. <laughs> Not where and I'm talking about. And that's a good about. thing because peppermint <coughs> will take over. Oh, yeah, that's the point. That's the that's what they wanted it to do where they put it. That it's going to take over and overgrow, blah, blah, blah. But around the house where the spiders are all at, that's another story. Ah. But there's like so this balance. You'll trap the spiders between the peppermint and the lavender. So they're going, Whoa, I don't know. There's pepper- <laughs> Whoa, there's lavender. Oh, we're stuck in the middle. No, ah. but I, I've given thought to what do those creeps keep the fuck out? <laughs> you get rid of the spiders. What are you, inv- you know, what in- neighbor are you inviting into your domain now? These spiders don't bite us. They're not those kind of spiders. But they eat and they exist out there in the in the yard. So hmm, they've been here for a long time. Why if I get rid of them? 
would replace him? Polacks or maybe some politicians? Hmm. Or maybe they will just keep those those whiny people that don't like spiders out of your yard because you'll just put up a big sign that says, "Here, there, this is a sanctuary yard for spiders. There you go. Oh, like in and, Virginia? Do you think yeah. any of that? Okay. The way I understand this, now I'm only reading internet stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Now, the sitting governor in Virginia today is submitting a bill. And if this bill is signed in, you know, if they get enough dip wads to sign it, then he can make it law, right? Mm-hmm. But not yet. Coming up in the future. Why won't anybody tell me when the fucking vote is going to be? I can't find that in the information anywhere. I don't know, but yeah, I keep seeing stuff about taking away your guns mm-hmm. and how he's wanting to increase the the budget for prisons and police so that they can round up all these people with guns that don't want to turn in their guns. And I'm thinking, dude, seriously, read that again. Read read it yourself. Well, right, but they keep you, saying you want to increase spending for prisons and police uh-huh. to round up people that refuse to give up their weapons. Yeah, yeah. that's their logic. But th- now this wow. is a pending bill. This is th- what I'm saying is they're promoting this as a problem already, but they haven't voted on it yet. So they're using the public as a tool to keep friction going to sell more guns. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I th- I think they're <laughs> just... You're screwed. They're stirring the shit pot, and You're I think so they need to lose the spoon. Right, but you know, average Joe is so crazy. You know, these people come out and get one house at a time with tanks and ATF agents. Take a month to do it. They're not in a hurry. <laughs> it's insane. They'll take my gun out of my cold day. Okay, <laughs> Johnny, we got a hot one. <laughs> think he's got a gun charge on him. <laughs> Make a full FBI report. That's Johnny with an H. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's how I see the country I'm from. That's how I see the country I'm in to a degree, but way smaller. You know, Uh, not not at the level that America's been so uh, successful at. You know, like their marketing yeah. department is freaking insane, but they're good. I've seen people on the Real Liberty Media chat recently saying how, <clears throat> how great America is. Okay. Go kill some Iranians! Yeah. Yeah, that, that's some real great behavior there, sport. I mean, because... You know, you guys might not understand this, but I live with a woman that is from another country. And her responses to some of the stuff that, you know, isn't, it's not American. <laughs> America has a little bit of opposition. <laughs> and, Just a know, little bit, huh? Oh, good God. It's like day and night, actually. In some areas, in some areas, no. You know? But the America that we've, evolved into to this point in time with all its bullshit and differences and it's not looking good. It makes other places look a whole lot better. See and I I just I that was one of those things I was watching the Twitter feed this morning and seeing how many people were being called unpatriotic and un American because they said I don't want to go to war with Iran. But they invaded and, the embassy. Okay, let me go with that. And I just, I just want to go. Oh my goodness, people, hmm. get your information from a source that is not the ones that you keep calling out as the propaganda machine every other day. But now, when it says something that gets your patriotic bone all a twitching, oh well, now they know what they're talking about. Hmm. Okay, I get the whole. A broken clock is right twice a day. I get that. Oh. Uh-huh. But yeah. seriously? Yeah. Mm. <sighs> well. See, I'm unpatriotic. But I'd, you I'd, have the advantage in this one, though, of seeing both sides of the fence, where other people have only seen one side. I was well, never yeah. 
I was never encouraged to support war in the first well, place. The, the really sad thing about mm. seeing both sides of the fence is, mm. is seeing that both sides of the fence are fenced in. Oh, yeah. I, too, geez. See, that's – this is the uh, – my point in time, the best prison I've been in in my life because I'm comfortable in it. And I've had more posh uh, surroundings and all that kind of shit. But there wasn't any uh, level of comfort was different. And wow, to find that in life is kind of cool. I recommend it to anyone. If you can get comfortable with your surroundings, there you go. And fuck everybody else. If they don't like you, so what? Doesn't mean anything. Yeah. No, fuck no. Does it? I mean, it does it, in a, any real physical fucking way that you can possibly imagine, Mary. My liking you or not liking you does not have any value to it. It's just words that you listen to. But the the one way or the other, the, the truth doesn't change anything. You believe what you believe, not what you're told. Yeah. Wow. See, so that's the refreshing part about you is even when you disagree with somebody, you're still kind of nice about it. <laughs> Me, I'm a total dickhead. If if I don't believe you, fuck you. Take your Rockefeller medicine and shove it up your wife's butt because you're coming soon, sport. But I'm trying to stall while you co cough in there. I didn't mean to make Thank you cough. You. Yeah, no, I was telling a bad joke. It's... <coughs> you all right? No, yeah. no, no. no. Oh, uh, went down and saw Wayne's grandkids, and <coughs> holy smokes, uh -oh. they were, well, we went to see them because they've all had the croup and the crud, and they were getting over oh. it, and obviously they weren't completely over it, because yeah. he and I now have the croup and the crud. Vitamin we're getting, C. <laughs> we're getting over it. Vitamin so. C, 10. Yes. Yeah, 10,000. Take a... And pine <coughs> Excuse me, pineapple juice yeah, take a, and uh, rosemary essential oil. Take a big dose of that shit, and you only got to do it once, maybe twice. But the first day you start, it goes right to you. And your body, See, and your body, you urinate it out quickly. So you can't store vitamin C. No. But that's why you can take... There's a lot of vitamins you can't store. But right, yeah, but that's I why you can take a certain amount of it if you're ill enough. and You need help, help, help. Take this. Well, and it was pretty much yesterday when I started getting that tickle in my throat again, and it's like, ah, oh, man. So that's when I started doing the, the uh, rosemary essential oil because that's very good for uh, respiratory issues. So I started dosing myself with my rosemary, and then I made myself a rollerball blend that <laughs> – Okay. Is uh, yeah. it's got cardamom and frankincense and yeah. rosemary and melaleuca, yeah. which is tea tree, yeah. and uh, huh. eucalyptus in it. Ooh. And holy macanoli, put a little bit of that on your hands and then just breathe it in. And wow, wow. So mm. that's what I've been doing the last, but today I'm st I still have that every once in a while that little tickle kicks in, and then it's like, oh, you do. Well, so. you do know what to do, though. So that that's yes. got to be yes. helpful. Well, yes. there's some vitamin people, C and pineapple juice. Yeah, some people do is they they milk you for the information, and then they find five reasons they can't do what you told them would work. Ah, you haven't found that because the answers to some of these questions are so simple that they can't be true. No, that does no, no. Well, it's like uh, Farmer and I were watching something on Roku, the Roku channel, and they have you know like three little commercials sometimes in some of those things, and it's like, oh my God, here's a commercial. Well, at least I can get up and go pee or something like that. Mm -hmm. In any case, there was one that was talking about the flu, and um, it said if you have the flu. If you are starting to feel flu-like symptoms, get a hold of your doctor immediately. Now, number one, not everywhere has emergency care places that you can just walk in. Some of those places you have to call and make an appointment. But they say you have to do this within the first 24 hours of feeling the symptoms. But then you can get a prescription for this flu medicine, 
that takes three to four days to get you over the flu mm. if you start it mm. within the first 24 hours. <laughs> and I'm thinking, wow, do you have some citrus fruit around your house? Do you have some essential oils? If you don't have essential oils, trust me, I can I can give you a link and you can get you some. Um, do you have some vitamin C? Do you have some pineapple juice? Do you have some salt? Do you have some, you know, all of these mm. things that are actually like food mm -hmm. anyway? Absolutely. And then you don't have to make an appointment in the <sighs> first 24 hours to yeah. go see a doctor to get a medicine that is going to take just as long to get over the flu as if you were to just get some sleep, eat some chicken soup, get you some vitamin C, a little more salt intake to help cut down on the mucus. Mm. Yeah, but, but Mary, the history was replaced with the future. They sold us a bullshit future that never existed at all. But they took the past way that worked and hid it from us and said, this is what you have available. They made hemp illegal. See? So mm -hmm. you, it wasn't even legal to pursue something that wouldn't fuck you up because all the things that were good for you, there were laws against them already by the 30s. So... Having this knowledge going into 2020, you're going to trust the Fed to, t to tell you the truth about anything. Can you give me a reason for that decision? What are they telling you the truth about? Because everything is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. That was part of, I, I've been on a, you know, ever since you said something about Black's Law, I've been looking into shit about Black's yeah, Law, and yeah. I kept coming back to it some of the videos Michael Tellinger that I had not seen yet mm -hmm. about um, hidden origins and lies and all that other fun stuff. And, and in one of those videos, he said that um, the most profound thing that he ever saw was everything you ever thought you knew is a lie. Mm -hmm. Everything they've told you yeah. Yeah. is a lie. Yeah. And he said when he first saw that, like 15, 20 years ago, he thought, oh, not everything. Not, at, no, I can see where a few things, but not everything. And he said, now I look at it and I go, yep, everything. Everything they taught us is a lie. And, you know, and he he even says the same thing I've been saying. You know, they take a truth, they take a little bitty kernel of truth, and then they bury it in bullshit. Mm -hmm. But since it's got that little bitty kernel of truth, they say that it's true. No, <laughs> it's a big ball of bullshit wrapped around a little bitty kernel of truth. Wow. See, and, and if somebody, you know, that sounds like you, it can say this so openly and still be called, a conspiracy nut. Well, you got to really understand how deep this this game that they call society, reality, whatever this bullshit is. That just goes to show how bullshit it is. Because mm -hmm. when I look around the room I'm in, I just keep thinking, I don't see any Israeli agents. I don't see any FBI, CIA, FDA, BBC. Nope, nope, nope. No micro. Well, hey, wait. I see Microsoft. Ooh. But, uh, yeah, so you don't see them, but they see you. Not on the computer I'm using. I don't have a, a camera on it. So how could they possibly do that? Hmm. They are clever. Really are well, screen. I well, that's why every day I give them a, the one-eyed salute <laughs> for their viewing pleasure. There you go. Yep. Mm. There you go. Yeah. No, nah, I don't. But this this thing doesn't have a camera in it. Uh, I, well, that, uh, this is how simple people are today, in my opinion, dear. Is that if you tell them a story about something that doesn't even exist, but you tell them the story, they're going to believe you without pursuing, hey, is that true? Yeah, because most people are just freaking lazy and they don't want to do the research. Grimmy says a kernel is a butt nugget. I can sum it up in just a few short sentences for you, okay? What, what's that? Simple. And I'll just give you the most basic, simple idea I got. Is you can use wireless transmission to get all this crap we get. 
but for some reason you can't transfer electricity through wireless. Why? Okay, I will take that a step further. If it truly is Wi-Fi Internet, uh, why do you have to have an Internet service provider? I if it's know. wireless, why do you have to have a provider? I don't know. You're making my head hurt, but you're asking some good questions. You're probably getting grim to explain that one. I'm not good with this techie stuff, so I'm glad you thought of it. I'm not good with it either, but it just it was one of those things that just popped into my head one day. Why Don't the hell know. do you have to have an ISP? Yeah. Grim, will catch up. Grim will catch up in the chat. I specifically am asking him for an opinion on this. We need a ruling from a sane judge. <laughs> not I just Colonel think if Clank. it exists out there in the air, in the airwaves, if it's a frequency, then why in the heck can't you just have something that catches that frequency all on your own, and you don't have to have someone that that regulates how fast you can get that information in or how fast you can upload information. Because I, all the all the technical truth behind all the truth, whatever the truth is, it's all covered up with all this modern day double talk shit about nothing. Wi-Fi, well, blah, 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 radio, okay, yeah. all that, that. So what, what I'm trying to get across to you is these movies I've seen about Tesla all give you one idea that they don't really come out and speak about, and that's that the man had proven in his day, in the 1920s, that electricity could be delivered wireless at no charge, yeah. at no cost. It didn't drain anything, just from the atmosphere around the fucking tower. And it could, yeah, all you needed was a little yeah, and it could little st- antenna on no, the roof of your house. Well, I don't remember about, but uh, what Waden Wadencliff Wardencliff was a tower that he built. It was pretty big, but I don't know yeah. how they delivered it from the tower. But his what I understand of it, he could draw it in from the atmosphere. So yeah, there was no. No reason to put a meter on it. Westinghouse, at the time when he had money, said, no way, are you out of your mind? And they shut him down. He wanted to give us electricity, and they couldn't They couldn't have that. They wanted to charge us for it. So Was that Westinghouse, or was that... Well, that uh, was the beginning of it, because Westinghouse bailed him out the last time he got bailed out, before he, before yeah, he got collapsed. Yeah, but then it was like J.P. Morgan or some... some there was a group of them. Westinghouse mm-hmm. went bankrupt through this. He's the one that stays in the forefront of my memory. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, but I'm not an Edison fan either. I'm not an Edison fan. I'm not a J.P. Morgan fan. Any of that. And I, but that makes you an American like me. I know. I know. I don't like the Carnegies either. Ooh, you're just a... You must be one of those little rib hills I keep hearing about all I'm the just time. Hateful. What's wrong with you, little missy? Don't you have no respect for the northern fellas? <laughs> okay, Rob right. says the provider provides a connection to the fiber trunk line that puts it in the Wi-Fi. Mm. Yeah, but is there really a cost uh Involved See, and in all just, that. It's probably the I'm trans- just thinking if it's going on fiber optic, it's right. going by light, via light. So right. isn't that fiber optic cable just trapping it? Hmm. Isn't it out there in the atmosphere? Ooh. I don't know. I'm asking. See, the delivery service, that's what I've been saying. Is Larry opened me up to this idea about the frequency, the vibration of the delivery is all that. That's the core of it, what matters. You can get it to the from the source to the user a billion different ways, and most of them are wrong. There's only a few ways to do it right, and they avoid the ways to do it right because there's more profit in wasteful production. Oh yeah, there's more profit oh, in, in coming uh, back a million times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spend two hundred thousand dollars on that hundred thousand dollar car by God in country. Yeah, planned obsolescence. <sighs> Yeah, but see, these numbers are so astronomical now. They sound huge to the poor man, but to the millionaire, eh, it's not that big a deal. Are you kidding? Gas could be $50 a gallon. What's a millionaire going to do? You think he's going to complain about any of that? Are you nuts? No. No, they'll just write it off their taxes. (laughs) 
See, and that's expense. where you get right back to uh, the whole bullshit of money. <laughs> what the hell do you need money for? I, I, cause, and that was one of those things that Michael Tellinger was talking about with the Sumerian tablets where they talked about and then they yeah. introduced money as a means of exchange. You want to put the link in the notes for the reference? It's, I think it's on Gaia. Well, if you don't have it, I won't. But if you do have it, it's, I can... It's Hidden Origins on oh, Gaia, and I'll well, see if I can... Well, if you put up a link, I'll copy and paste it to the notes for you. Okay. That way it would be done properly. I won't get something that you don't want. Not dodging the responsibility. I, I just want it done right. Because boy, I'm dangerous with a computer. Whew. Boy, I don't believe I got this far. You know, I can do radio alone now. Without yeah, e- yeah, without even jitters. It's weird. I remember kind of when I was nervous. I don't know what the fuck that was. Actually, you know, today it was like, what the fuck was all that about? But at the time, I probably had a list. You know. But when you get experienced in shit in life, you learn, hey, I was wrong. Oops. Well, let's not do it like that again. That didn't seem to work out. But when other people find you wrong, it's not so uh, not so pleasant. You know, when you make a boo-boo in life. Yeah, well, I, yeah. That's, you ever that's get... why that whole saying to err is human. Yeah. And there's some days I'm superhuman. Yeah. <laughs> to forgive is against company policy. <laughs> oh, there's that too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Are you superhuman? Uh, I am when I have those really super days of wow, yeah. I screwed up again. Well, well then let's the air is human. Let's do the rest of the show on. Let's manipulate some feelings. There's our topic. You ever, do you ever willingly, knowingly, openly, ever take advantage of your womanly goodness and manipulate somebody else's feelings? Yeah. <laughs> okay, like, how would you do that? and What would your result be? <clears throat> well, see, it's different with each person, and it's different with what you do. I mean, That's why I picked, you know, said you pick one as an example. I didn't want to pick it. That'd be pretty oh, rude. <laughs> shit. With my with my womanly wiles influence someone? Well, yeah, but I got a grandmother and a mother and besides a wife. I mean, I know I daughters. I mean, frick, women have a way that men don't have. It's just the way it is. That's because we're ever so good at batting our eyes. Well, right, but you just and try to dodge it. The and, hip and, you just try to dodge that particular as a uh, no but it's well i can't i can't think of any one instance Mm -hmm. you know i mean i know i've done it oh okay all right right. well every female it's not like men can do it that's the whole fucking point you know there's a there's this gender split and chemicals have shifted it greatly over the last 40 years but there's still a gender split and yet there are ways that men can do it as well. Do I mean, what? it's it's just, that's why it's called manipulation, you know, because females are really good at it because feelings and all that fun shit, but men are good at it too. What are we good at? At, okay, case in point, granddaughter mm-hmm. was told, but if you loved me, you would. And I looked at her and I said, Whoa. next time he pulls that line with you, you just look at him and say, and if you love me, would you ask? Wow. Well, very, yeah, good response. But wow, still, what a slap. <laughs> guilt. Where do they, they what, selling Jewish guilt tablets or what? Apparently so. Hmm. But, you know, teenage boys and. Oh, yeah, and yeah, 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 sure. But that. you got to learn. Okay, still, I was a teenage boy. There you go. And. Whatever you do with your life, you actually, you learn it from some grown-up input. Because that's what you're doing. If you look back, you'll see yourself copying the adults. And you copy the adults by engaging with them. You don't learn anything from your peers. They're a bunch of peers. They're stupid. You want to learn, you go to the old people that know what the fuck happens. And and 14, 30 is fucking ancient. Those people oh, yeah. have been around. They know shit. So there you go. Well, and listen to the stories, you know, that they tell. Because, man, oh, man, even the stories where they got busted or the stories where they got away with it, that way you can learn, oh, hey, that's mm-hmm. how they got away with that one. I got to remember that yeah. shit. 
Well, so. earlier today I was telling Sir the way that I look back on, on my history personally right, is what I did, what I tried to do at 20, I wasn't as good at at 20 as I am today. Okay? There you go. Yeah. Or what I tried to do at 30, I was really good at 30, but years caught up with me. Now I'm not as good at that anymore. And life is like a balance, and you get this bag to keep these ideas alive or kill them. You can forget anything you want to forget. And you can remember anything that you truly want to remember if you channel into it, I suppose. Yeah. You know, within reason, I'm not talking the womb or any of that insane shit. I just mean, you know, regular life that you live, that something happened, the memory is in there if you know how to find it. I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all. I'm just making a statement about there's a way for you to do it if you really want to do it. And as I get older, memory is really important. Yes, it is. And I don't mean that kind of memory where you go to the grocery store and you see that kid once every two weeks. Oh, you're backing. You know, one of those. No. I mean, where you see somebody every day. Those things are strange. Uh, I came from uh, seeing you yeah, once in two weeks to now I live with somebody every freaking day. And it's like, wow. It is quite different, isn't it? Oh, yeah. But uh, I don't think I'm really, uh, what do you call it, bachelorhood material, so to speak. Nah, being alone doesn't suit me. And, you know, I wouldn't want to be living with a dog alone. Ooh, that would be work. So, no. It's a matter of uh, how I manipulate my feelings, I think. You know, and and you know, I think we all manipulate, whether it's we manipulate others or manipulate ourselves. Mm. Oh, like in terms of being free when I... When, uh, when I would look at my history and my periods of life where I was completely free of everything and everybody, there was still a, a dark side to that in a sense, because, Hey, I'm out here all by myself, man. <laughs> so even though you're satisfied in the freedom department, then in the, the partner department, you go, Hey, something's wrong. What the fuck is it? And when you're 20, you don't see it that way, that way that you might see it when you're say 50. 60. And we're taught that one size fits everybody. And now we're taught that if this size doesn't fit you, pick a tag and we'll make you a group to fit you. And it's yeah. doing a lot of harm to society. They don't see the damage they're doing, I don't think. It's just another version of putting a square peg in a round hole. I mean, mm, how do you mean? Oh, go oh, give me an example of that one, though. Manipulate well, you know, my feelings. Manipulate your feelings? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, like telling... Okay, so I don't want to go to war with Iran. Okay. I think uh, it's stupid. Okay. I think okay. bombing people that haven't done a damn thing to us just because there's one bad guy there. Oh, let's take out a whole bunch of people because, well, you know, it's um, collateral damage. Oops, we're sorry. And then wondering why those people all of a sudden don't like us when we inflict collateral damage on them. You know, I don't know. I I guess I don't really know where I'm going with this other than it just, when you say, no, I don't want to do this collateral damage bullshit anymore. And then someone, all of a sudden, you've got some people slapping a label on you of being a peacemonger and someone else telling you you're a coward and someone else calling you this (laughs) and you got Yeah. It's like uh-huh. all of a sudden the dividing line starts showing up, and all you did was express an opinion. Oh, you yeah. know, but man, that's all you got to do on the interwebs anymore is express an opinion, sit back, and wait for the blood to start spurting. Wow, it's gotten that bad too. I've it been has. I've been away from the homeland for uh, eight years and change. So, lucky me, I don't I don't know what to call it. Part of me, it's almost like I got a patriotic bone in me somewhere, and I go, wow, it, there, it looks like a possibility that the politicians in Virginia are going to create a civil war at home over an obsolete weapon. 
instead well. of just, you know, quit fucking lying to people and just let them keep their goddamn guns and shut the fuck up. They're going to create a freaking civil war over threatening people to take them away from them. So whether they and, do it or not, is the threat is there, Mary. It's huge. Well, it's those, and those are the same people that say, damn it, don't tread on my rights. And but all they need I'm is the threat. This, they don't need the legal shit to ever happen. They're just looking for a reason to shoot somebody. There's nut jobs out there. It seems to me that the system that we live with is looking to incite that poor fucker out there that's nuts, that wants to do this thing, thinks he's going to save the world by starting World War III. And that's what they'll do. They'll blame it on the fucker they set up to do it, like they always do. And that's what I see coming. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Well, I'm just... Uh, I get so frustrated with all this, because I just see all of these people out there demanding, mm. you should listen to me. You should let me. I have a right to speak my mind. Yes, you do, <laughs> but so does everybody else. Sure. And you need to stop saying, okay, be inclusive, but you have to be inclusive the way I decide inclusive is fine. You know. Be tolerant, but be tolerant the way I say. You know. Because if you're not tolerant the way I say tolerant works, then you're not very tolerant and you're an intolerant asshole, and I can say you're an intolerant asshole because I'm tolerant. I know. It's too it's funny. Like, really? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, but. I read about these things, but I never engage these things. So my reality is one life, and my reading world is this chaotic ball of shit that nobody gets along in. In the real, the reality world, everybody seems to get along just fine. I, I don't <laughs> see. Yeah, in reality world, I very rarely. But man, you see a lot of that, sh and I think a lot of that's why I. I am stepping away from the interwebs gradually because it's oh and and I because it just it makes me crazy. Well, there you go. See, that's a decision you have to make for yourself. Can't be told. No, yeah. you come to terms with it yourself. That's my advice to you on the dork table. Don't put your shit in my basket. I got no shit already. Keep it to yourself. Yeah. You know, be responsible for what you fucking got to live with, and don't tell me what's wrong with me. <laughs> you know what I, yeah. I don't like I don't like when people are always telling me what's wrong with me hey wait a minute you know when I go to the grocery and such and get out there in the Danish world nobody ever tells me hey shut up American you're mean wonder why got any ideas uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> no that, that just kind of did it right there <laughs> It's, hey, I have a dream. <sighs> but I'm a man of my word. So I figure if I don't say anything, there's nothing to be responsible for. What are you going to do? Are you going to hold have a good day against me? <laughs> good luck with that one. <laughs> the joke's on you. It's, it's just long hair and a beard. I ain't going to hurt nobody. <laughs> uh, oh, but someone else's perspective, you might be a scary individual and and you have no control over that whatsoever doesn't make a shit and bit of difference what you say or do if someone is going to look at you and say you're a scary individual mm -hmm. then they're going to see you as a scary individual even if you're the nicest person on the planet because right. damn it that's scary having nice people around okay and every once in a while when i'm like walking downtown and i'm going somewhere there's all glass windows on both sides of me and every mm -hmm. uh, occasionally, it doesn't happen every day or anything, but once in a while, I'll see myself in a glance and, a, and not know it was me for just a split second and go, oh, fuck, <laughs> that's me. Because <laughs> I don't see myself with all this hair and beard and all that. I, I'm doing it, so it's not, uh, it's not on the top of my uh, awareness thing. What I look like to you, does that doesn't even fucking enter the equation. Until I sit down and specifically think about it like I'm doing right now. But in reality, mm -hmm. when I'm out there living, last thing on my fucking mind is what I look like. I, then I, I wonder, later on when I sit down and think about it, then I go, wow, that explains why that woman gave me that weird look. You know, because somebody will be like fishing for a cigarette or something and then they 
they find what they're looking at and they look straight up and they see you're the first thing they see. And there just be a little flinch to it because you go like, hey, what the fuck? Because <laughs> I call that the, the Marcus Welby flinch. Do you ever watch that show, Marcus Welby? And no, but show that, not to that memory, but I'm sure is I right have. there is they're pulling the, the, <laughs> the mask off. Away. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's like, whoa, I woke up to that. <laughs> Laughing gas was invented. <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, seriously, that's that's not the first thing I wanted to wake up to. Uh, you know, I, I saw something on Minds. I didn't I didn't copy the link. I don't think, but what I did do is remember some of it. And it was like a it was either real or a mock, but I, it was about calling the CDC and asking them, you know, about the uh, ingredients on the inside of the uh, the inoculation label, but not telling them that's the source of it. Well, what did you do if you if I if I put these products in my child, you know, these blah, 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 and blah, blah, then they come back and they go, well, that would be child abuse, and you would probably be, you know, arrested for these crimes and those crimes and those crimes. Now, what is the source of this? Well, this is the uh, ingredients in the inoculation label. <laughs> but I don't, That's called yeah. compartmentalization, and they do that so that, you know, if you don't see the full picture, the big picture then it will be easier to get you to be a good little order follower. You just handle this little part right here. Just just, this, don't worry about that other stuff over there. You just handle this little part right here, and everything will be okay. It's all fine. No, it's all fine. I got the opposite out of that link. I got that if you told them that I, as an individual, am going to put this shit in my kid, that they would arrest you for doing so. That's the point. Yeah. But they, the government, can make laws that make it so that they can experiment on you with no recourse. And apparently, See, right, it worked. And I that, saw it as the helpline person being absolutely clueless as to the product that they are forcing on everyone. And I think that it works in the Admiralty Court, but it doesn't hold up in the. Uh, in the Supreme Court. That's the game they're playing with the public to keep it real, to make it look like this is worth fighting for. Instead of a collective fuck you for one day, it wouldn't take more than a day. We're not doing this no more. Stop. Everybody sit down where you're standing for one fucking day. Stop. There you go. The powers that be have no power over you unless you do what they want you to do. Uh. And we... We got all the power, but we don't know we got any power because we're too busy arguing with each other about how stupid the other fucker is to ever join together and create a force. No. Let's argue about, oh, I'm yeah. for this president, and I'm for this party, and oh, suck my party already with your I'm for bullshit. That's where all the problems start. You know? <laughs> it's not It's not the collective... It, it's the belief that there's a collective that creates all this trash. Yeah. Yeah, because it doesn't matter if there is or if it's true or not. If you're told certain things, your mind is trained to, to indoctrinate it into certain belief patterns. And boom, you go right where you're supposed to go. Me, I was raised a free spirit. Suffer the consequences of your fucking behavior. Because people are never going to fucking like it. So I do. <laughs> and then I met Cirk. And Cirk kind of... She's not completely pissed off at me all the time. <laughs> right, honey? <laughs> not all the time. No, but I, I have been around people that, for some reason, you might find this hard to believe, Mary. <sighs> some people didn't like to be around me at all. At all? Not not even for me. <laughs> Not even in the same room. <laughs> Can you imagine? I know. Like I, I know. threw a chair at him or something. I don't know what their problem could have been. Don't want to be around him. <laughs> I was guilty of lots of sins in bars. Let me tell you. I would read a book. <laughs> it got me a bad reputation. <laughs> Oh, see how you are. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's funny on the radio years later down the road. 
But when it was happening, and I was the, you know, I guess the, the butt of the book choke. <laughs> oh man, because the bartenders were friends of mine, so they would tell me, "Oh man, they're ragging on you when you're not here about that fucking book." I'd go, wow, really? <laughs> and I would just laugh. I thought it was funny, but they thought they were hurting my feelings or something. It was ridiculous. Yeah. You know, you really have to care about someone's opinion in order for it to hurt your feelings. Oh, tremendously. That's why me and Vinny fell apart, radio-wise. I went, oh, man. Yeah. Just to, uh, it was funny to him, went funny to me, and ah, we couldn't see eye to eye. It wasn't about friendship. It was just about behavior. Yeah. Yeah. And I wouldn't set my standards as high as his, so ah, I had to go. Time to go play in the sandbox with my cat. <laughs> and hope well, the and cat doesn't bury me. <laughs> and that's what the all of the drumbeat of war shit is now. America's getting ready to go play in somebody else's sandbox. Be careful of the cat turds while you're in there, okay? Because cats like to use sandboxes for other things. Does, does average Joe realize how serious this Iran thing can get? <laughs> Because Iran and Russia are kind of packed. <laughs> oh, boy. So it's all a matter of words and legality and shit like this that they'll argue about for 20 fucking years. So it doesn't matter who starts what. What just matters is what happens, right? <laughs> Guess who's going to get hurt? I would put my money on Iran's going to get punched in the face. I would put my money on a whole bunch of people that want nothing to do with the conflict or the ones that are going to get hurt. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Jeez, oh, this is banker wars, Mary. People don't want any of this. I don't wish this on my neighbor down the road has got a freaking cigarette store. You know, he's got family back there, too, apparently. And a brother in Germany. And he's all spread out all over fucking Europe, too. So, hmm. not... How do you put this? See, not everybody, like, I'm so different to everybody else, in my opinion, because I don't hold an allegiance to a flag, and they all do, and I don't. Oh, God, and every time, and I, you know, I used to be one of those, I pledge allegiance to the flag people, and then someone said, it's a piece of cloth, and I went, wait a minute, it is just a piece of cloth. Why am I pledging allegiance to a piece of cloth? I mean, and it's something that I'm not supposed to wear. I'm not supposed to wrap it around me or anything. Ooh. I pledge allegiance to a piece of cloth that can only hang up on a pole during certain hours of the day. If I'm going to pledge allegiance to some cloth, it's going to be my bed linen Ooh. while I'm laying down in the bed and hey. snoring. I pledge allegiance to the sheets. Ooh. You know, or I you pledge allegiance girl. to my bathrobe that keeps me warm when I'm strolling through the house. <laughs> okay. That Why was... the hell do I want to pledge allegiance to any other cloth? I don't know. Maybe, maybe because you had a mental breakdown. See, you broke me, okay? So you're going to go all flag now? Okay, don't blame me for your misfortune. No, I'm going to go all bathrobe. <laughs> go all bathrobe. Well, fuck y'all. I'm <laughs> pledging allegiance to my pink fuzzy bathrobe because it keeps me warm and it's oh so soft. Well, you manipulated oh, yeah. my feelings. Let me tell you, little missy. There you, you go. Done. I'm I'm a changed man. I've seen the light. Hallelujah. <laughs> You're welcome. Anytime. Hey, you know, yeah. I could always fall back on it in the times get tough and go into the Baptist ministry. Preach yes, the could. word of Jesus. Just like Repent. the other char Yeah, but I, I'd be a charlatan among charlatans. Ooh. That'd be like being a shark in a shark pool. You know, shark pool. Pool full of other sharks. What do sharks eat when the food's all gone? How do you out-shark a shark? Yeah, I was thinking, what if sharks eat when the food's all gone? Hmm. See, that's why sharks are the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> They'll eat just about anything. <laughs> so they're like Mikey in the live commercials. I have read some stories and seen some links about things cut, you know, uh, fish cut open and things they found inside them. Whew, yeah, they will eat anything. They've got, mm -hmm. wow. they're, they're worse than German shepherds. <laughs> Never mind. 
or Bubba. <laughs> Poor Bubba. I swear, that he's dog the will, coolest dog. Move. Yeah, but he's so cool. Being a meanie, you big old meanie. See how you are. Well, he's a good doggy, but of course. Yeah. But yeah, when when they're that big, they they're like people. You want to just yell at them. Expect them to understand you. Sometimes they do. He does. He does. Man, the other day, I, <laughs> you know, well, when I got up in the morning yeah. and he's, you know, doing the slinky dog thing, and I went, do you want to go outside? Do you need to go potty? And I went over and I opened the door and he turned and he went, rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> and I swear yeah. he was saying, thank you. I looked at him and I said, you're welcome. And then he went out the door. Uh, well, every now and again, I, the cat and the dog will be in a feisty, playful kind of mood. And I swear I hear the cat cry, Hannah. But, see, I've been around them so long, I can make myself believe whatever I want, because they're my animals. But maybe you are actually tuning into them and understanding what they're saying. Scary thought, huh? But I've got yeah. the cat down to four separate cries for what he wants. He doesn't require a lot of attention. It's just when he does, it's like, get your ass the fuck over here and open this door before I rip your face off. Yeah. Don't know why, but you just get that vibe off the cat. You walk up and he's clawing the carpet on his shit, doing this little dance, rubbing his head on your leg. <laughs> and he's yeah. making a slave out of you, and, and you're like standing there like he's doing you a fucking favor or something. Because <laughs> humans and animals don't interact at the same level. And we don't really know. I studied a little bit of the cat. This is my cat, not your cat, but I know how he acts. From watching him for all these years, my interpretation of it. And wow, he's a prick. Yeah, it's one of those. Oh, look, he likes you. He's rubbing up against oh, you, and he's then the cat mind is going. Yeah. Oh man, I got a freaking itch. Oh cool. no, no, they're marking me. He's, this is mine. He's putting his cat scent on me so that other cats oh, yeah. won't come near me. I think that's well, what he's yeah. doing. Marking his territory. Yeah, yeah. Be and, thankful he's not spraying you. And he, I would say he's about, he's good 10 years old, maybe older, right? And since Cirque had his nuts whacked off, like today, just out of nowhere, he lays on the floor and just starts spinning around chasing shit. That's not there. Like the ninja thing, only with a cat. Mm -hmm. it flip it, and he's an overweight cat now. He's wintertime. He sits around and eats all the time. So he's mm -hmm. like a bowling ball with a tail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I have one of those. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. But yeah. but then he'll lay on the ba on his back on the floor and flip around like a kitten. It's the funniest fucking thing. I don't know if that translates in your mind verbally. You might have oh, yeah. to require a video for that one. But yeah. No, I get it. I've got one that does that as well. Isn't old age exciting? We got cats that run our lives and shit. But that's why we oh. do the dork table on Saturday. And thanks a That's lot right. for playing along with me today. We did touch a few interesting topics on this show isn't for people who require therapy 2020. And we did, in my reality, I am greater than 10 to the 10th power. And then we did the do's and don'ts starting your first international cult. <laughs> yeah, that cult. <laughs> that that, that cult. fucking cult. No, you get my cult coolest fucking name in the world. That fucking cult is my, the name of my yeah, cult. Yeah. Yeah, now, yeah, and, yeah. But when I inform people that they're members of that cult, boy, are they going to be surprised. I know. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to try and figure out how to get out of it. And what they need to realize is you never got in it. I'm going to be like Santa Claus. I'm going to have my naughty list. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's right. Well, I'm going to have to strive for the naughty list. <laughs> it's what I do. Oh, you dirty girl. I swear. I, li I like being on the oh, naughty anyway. list. Thanks a lot, Grimner, for letting us do the dark table here on RLM. Uh, that's the reallibertymedia.com channel on the text bar. Anything cool or important to tell these people before we leave them to their privy of their own boudoir? Uh, mm, privy of their own boudoir. Uh, <laughs> if you're going to 
pledge allegiance to a cloth, pledge allegiance to either your fuzzy bathrobe or your sheets. That's the only <laughs> thing. <laughs> wow. I don't know what that meant, but I know she said sheets. <laughs> yeah, ten and, sheets and fuzzy split something. by Sam the Sheet fuzzy, Splitter. Something about fuzzy. Uh, uh, close, I know. Getting fuzzy in the sheets. Mm. There you go. Well, hey, you know what? We're in a we are in a world that is fueled on things that are not true, and fewer people understand that than we think. Let us hope that maybe somebody will take a better look and sit differently tomorrow. Yes. yes. <laughs> that's it for that's me, folks. that's what makes life worth living, is seeing things differently tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. See you, love you, bye. Thank you, Grimmy. Over and out.